Hi, I'm Kristen Gutierrez, an expert in sales leadership development. And today I'm here with Brian Boche. Hi, Brian. What's up, everybody? How you doing? Good. So, Brian, you're here for Be a Better Sales Leader and in our interview series. And I just thought maybe you could tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, so I'm the co-founder uh, and CEO of The Purpose Company. So what we specialize in is helping people discover their exact purpose, but also packaging their purpose into a form of expertise that they can take out into the world and, and monetize, whether it's speaking, coaching, or consulting. So that's my thing. That's your thing. So how long have you owned your own company and how long would you consider yourself having been a leader? Been an entrepreneur for going on eight and a half years. Um, and then in the last four years, our company started having its own team. I mean, I started um, what I started my first business with like 50 bucks and by myself. My first course, I was teaching how to become a self-published author. And something I had already discovered before that was a proprietary methodology to discover one's purpose. And, and so after I kind of um, learned all my entrepreneurial lessons, if you will, on teaching people how to become self-published authors in my first course, I decided that my next big play would be to create the company that I'm running today. Um, and so for the last four years, um, we've had you know a team of some sort, and our team now is growing quite a bit. And I'm sure our team will be at somewhere between, I don't know, 20 to 30 people by the end of the next 12 months. Oh, congratulations. It's so yeah. fun watching your journey and being part of it. But um, from a leadership perspective, did it did it come naturally to you? Or, you know, how was it when you first started leading the team of one to like the team where it is now? And what do you think of when you start to think about the future state of how big your team might be? You know, it's really funny because my first book that I ever read, my first self-published or not my first book that I read when I was 16 was John Maxwell's 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership, which is really interesting for somebody who's 16 years old. But I was at like this student leadership conference um, uh, when I was 16 years old. And one of the giant piles of books at the back of the room was copies of 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership. And so that was literally the first personal development book I ever read. And because of that, my entire per per, you know, personal development journey was viewed through the lens of leadership before anything else, before it was about like, you know, having a better mindset or becoming an entrepreneur, the lens started with leadership. Uh, and what's interesting is, you know, we have a highly proprietary process to discover purpose. And so um, by breaking an individual's purpose down into four elements like we have, my primary leadership tool is actually understanding mm -hmm. an individual's contribution to my team. Because we define purpose as the best of what you have to help others. So for me, the number one thing I have to do to any of my direct reports is to determine what is the unique thing? What's the best of what they have to contribute to the team? And, and how can I individually connect that to the mission? Okay, McKinsey did a study in 2021. They found that um, of the people that they surveyed, the people that felt their companies did the hard work to connect their personal purpose to the overall mission of the organization, 87% of those people decided that they were going to stay long-term at that company. So if you're looking at teams and you're thinking, how do I engage my team? Um, how do I tie them to the mission long-term? My leadership philosophy is I have to understand what individually motivates that person and what are they individually best at and work daily to tie that uniqueness to the overall mission. Wow. That's f fascinating, right? You have so much knowledge of the subject matter and that yet you started at just 16 with a book and here you are now. Um, so other than like tying the mission, uh, tying an individual's contribution, their strengths back to your mission, are there any other nuggets of wisdom that you would share? What contributes to you being a great leader? I there's this uh, dynamic between purpose and fulfillment. Everybody is seeking some level of fulfillment in their life. Some people are seeking like surface level happiness. Some people are seeking something much deeper than that. Purpose is the best of what you have to help others. Fulfillment, on the other hand, is the result of helping others with the best of what you have. And human beings receive fulfillment in really three primary ways. One, gratitude from those we help. Two, observation of the people we help. So for example, if you are, uh, an associate at a big four accounting firm, it's really important for your leader to let you know how you help 
the client so that that person can actually observe the transformation that the client had. The other way that we receive fulfillment is through our own personal results. So that could be the simple stuff. It could be like, you know, getting a new car or getting a raise or something like that. But what most drives people is the gratitude they receive. And the biggest mistake that leaders make is they fail to give the people that report to them that are on their team specific gratitude. Not general gratitude like, hey, John, thank you so much for being here today. Super glad you walked in the door. It's more like, hey, John, thank you so much for that spreadsheet tool you put together because that thing that we gave to the client today made literally the difference that closed the deal. I got to thank you for that. If you didn't do that, that deal wouldn't have happened. That's an example of specific gratitude. Even better is if you know that one of your team members has an incredibly high value skill set, make sure that you're connecting the gratitude, that specific dose of gratitude to the high value skill set. That's how you're going to tap into what most fulfills them. So remember, purpose, if it's the best of what somebody has to help others, we have to make sure that we're highlighting the best of who they are in our gratitude because that is completing a feedback loop of fulfillment. A lot of companies make a big mistake. Companies confuse compensation with gratitude. Compensation is not gratitude. Compensation is contractual. Even bonuses really don't make a big difference. Like if you give somebody a raise, they've done studies on this. If you give somebody a raise, the average mental high that that gives somebody is about six weeks. So what are you going to do beyond compensation? It's not gratitude. You actually have to take the time to be grateful. You know, this is a person who's given their precious time, time they're never going to get back to serve the mission of your company. We've got to do better than compensation. I love these interviews because I always learn so much, both about my own leadership journey and then just kind of add what contributes to this whole concept of leadership, no matter what you're doing is sales leadership or people leadership. Uh, so this is really fascinating. Thank you. Mm. It, 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 as advice, then back to your younger leader self, now that you are where you are, and I know you kind of already touched on a lot of it, or what advice would you give to young leaders, leaders just starting out? This one is going to feel a little out of left field because it's like, Read these five books and you'll become this great leader. That's actually not my advice at all. The advice I would give to any person that is going to be a leader or is a leader or anybody who's getting into a committed relationship, whether that's just a personal relationship or some kind of business partnership, the number one piece of advice that I would give anyone is deal with your patterns. Deal with your patterns. And our patterns come from a couple of places, but primarily a lot of our patterns, our decision-making patterns, how we interact with people come from our childhood developmental years. And it's really important as a leader to identify the patterns that serve us and the patterns that don't. So if you've never done an inventory on the patterns you have in your life, whether it's how you think about people, how you talk to yourself, um, what you expect when you're going into some kind of new relationship, do you pre-expect rejection before you ever give somebody a chance the number one piece of advice I would give someone is to deal with your patterns because a lot of our dysfunctional patterns, if you will, are what produce insecurity in our leadership. And if we're insecure leaders, insecure leaders do what? They micromanage, they lord over people, they act more like bosses, not coaches. So if there's one piece of advice that I would give to my younger self and any other leader that's just starting out, deal with your patterns so other people don't have to deal with your patterns. Oh, so good, Brian. So if every, anybody who's listening or watching wants to find out more about you or connect with you, what's the best way they can do that? Yeah, purposecompany.com kind of goes over everything that we do for individuals who are seeking to transition from being a, a professional and let's say a traditional kind of W-2 role. They want to move into being a highly paid expert as a coach, consultant, or speaker. That's where to go. Awesome. Thank you so much for your time today. Yeah. Ah, 